In this video, we will be talking about right triangle trigonometry. Before we do that, we need to recall a couple of different things. The first is how to find coterminal angles. In order to find a coterminal angle, you simply add or subtract 2 pi or add or subtract 360 degrees. The next thing we need to know is how to convert between degrees and radians. To convert from degrees to radians, you multiply by pi over 180, and to convert from radians to degrees, you multiply by 180 degrees divided by pi. Then we need to know how to find arc length and the area of a sector of a circle. In order to find arc length, s, you simply multiply radius r times theta. And in order to find the area, you simply multiply 1 half times radius squared times theta. In both cases, theta, the angle, must be in radians. The next thing we need to know how to do is to use unit circle trig. And unit circle trig relies, the, relies on the use of a unit circle, which is a circle of radius 1. In this unit circle, if we rotate a radius, that terminal side, or the angle, will intercept the circle at a point x, y. Our trig functions will use that angle and spit out those coordinates. All right? So the trig function sine, if we take sine of theta, we get the y coordinate. The cosine of theta will get the x coordinate, and the tangent of theta will give us the ratio of y to x. And then there are the reciprocal functions. So cosecant of theta will give 1 over y, secant of theta will give 1 over x, and cotangent of theta will give us x over y. And within the unit circle, there are several different important angles and coordinates we need to know. Mainly, this first coordinate. This first quadrant. If we know the first quadrant, we can get the next three by simply evaluating where we are at in terms of the Cartesian plane. So important angles we absolutely need to know is pi over 6, pi over 4, and pi over 3. So in right triangle trig, we have a right triangle with one of the non-right angles labeled theta. Relative to this angle, we have the hypotenuse, the adjacent, and the opposite sides, as labeled in this triangle. So the opposite side is the side opposite the angle, the hypotenuse is the largest side, and the adjacent is the side attached to the theta, but not the hypotenuse. The lengths of these sides can be found using the Pythagorean theorem, as written right here, and the trig functions, which you know as SOHCAHTOA. So sine of theta will give the opposite over the hypotenuse, cosine of theta will give the adjacent over the hypotenuse, and tangent of theta will give the opposite over the adjacent, which can also be written as the sine over cosine. And then cosecant is just the reciprocal of sine, secant is the reciprocal of cosine, and cotangent is the reciprocal of tangent. So using this information, we can use the given triangle to find the six trigonometric functions. First thing I like to do is to just label which side is which. So we have our angle theta, which means that this 4 is the opposite side, and this 3 is the adjacent side. And we do not have the hypotenuse, which is the first thing that we should do. We should find the hypotenuse. In order to do that, we take the opposite side squared plus the adjacent side squared, and that will be equal to our hypotenuse squared. 4 squared is 16, 3 squared is 9, 16 plus 9 is 25, and the square root of 25 is just 5. So our hypotenuse is 5. Then we just use all of these sides to find our six trigonometric metric functions. So sine of theta is the opposite side over the hypotenuse, so it's 4 fifths. Cosine of theta is the adjacent side over the hypotenuse, which is 3 fifths. Tangent of theta is the opposite over the adjacent, so it's 4 thirds. And then the reciprocal functions are just the reciprocals of these fractions. 
So cosecant is 5 fourths. Secant is 5 thirds. And cotangent is 3 fourths. Again, if we want to use the given triangle to find the six trigonometric functions, um, we kind of do the same thing. So in blue, we want to find the six trig functions of a 45 degree isosceles triangle. So in this case, we do have to think just a little bit. Because this is a 45 degree right triangle, a 45 degree isosceles right triangle, we know that this other side is also 45 degrees. Because of this, we know that this side and this side are congruent, so they are both one. So let's take this bottom left-hand one as theta, and we can start to find what we need to find. Again, we don't have our hypotenuse, so that's the first thing that we should find. So in this diagram, this will be the opposite side, and this bottom one will be the adjacent side. So in order to find the hypotenuse, we do 1 squared adjacent squared plus the opposite squared, which again is just 1 squared, which is equal to our hypotenuse squared. 1 squared is 1, so overall we get 2, and our hypotenuse is the square root of 2. So then we can start using these side lengths to find our six trig functions. So sine of theta is the opposite over the hypotenuse, so 1 over root 2, which we need to rationalize. So it's just root 2 over 2. Cosine. is also 1 over root 2, which just ends up being the same thing. And then tangent ends up being 1 over 1, which is just 1. And then we can find our reciprocal functions. So cosecant is just the reciprocal of sine. So it's 2 over root 2, which we need to rationalize. So we get 2 root 2 over 2, which is just root 2. Secant, we will get the same thing. And then tangent, or cotangent. The reciprocal of 1 is just 1. In red, we want to do the same thing but with a 30, 60, 90 right triangle. So in this case, we do need to do a little bit extra that might not be obvious. Um, so we have one side length of 1, and the first thing we need to do is to find the other side lengths. So what I'm going to do, which might not seem obvious, is to flip this triangle and kind of draw its shadow. So if we do that, this angle will be 60, this angle up here is 30, and now we have a, an equilateral triangle, which means that this side length is 1, so this entire thing is 2, which means this is 2, and this is 2, which gives us the information we need to find this missing side. So if we label this 60 degrees as theta, this red one down here is our adjacent side. This 2 is our hypotenuse. And we're missing the opposite side. So in order to find the opposite side, again, we just set up our Pythagorean theorem. So our adjacent side squared 
is 1 squared plus our opposite side squared, which we don't know, is equal to our hypotenuse squared, which is 2 squared. So 1 plus opposite squared is equal to 4. So our opposite squared will equal 3. So our opposite side is root 3. And then again, we can use these three side lengths to find our six trig functions. So sine of theta, our opposite side is root 3, our hypotenuse is 2, so we get root 3 over 2. Cosine of theta is the adjacent side over the hypotenuse, which is just 1 half. And then tangent is the opposite side over the adjacent side, which is root 3 over 1. And then again, for the reciprocal functions, we just flip all these fractions. So cosecant of theta is 2 over root 3, which again we need to rationalize to get 2 root 3 over 3. Secant of theta is just 2 over 1. And then tangent of theta, sorry, cotangent of theta, is 1 over root 3, which again we need to rationalize to get root 3 over 3. And then those are the six trig functions for both blue and red. So before we go to the next part, um, if you recall from our unit circle, the sine and cosine gave you the y and x coordinates respectively for the point that the angle intercepts the circle at. If you recall, the sine of 45 will give you the y coordinate of the of the point where the angle intercepts the circle which is root 2 over 2 the cosine will also give you root 2 over 2 and then if you move down to a 30 degree angle or a 60 degree angle we get either the y is equal to root 3 over 2 or 1 half and then the x is equal to root 3 over 2 or 1 half which again we just found right here using all of these angles. So some important angles that we need to know the sines, cosines, and tangents of. Um, they align very, very well with the ones that we did with the unit circle. So sine of 30 degrees is the same as sine of pi over 6. That will always be 1 half cosine of 30 degrees or cosine of pi over 6 will always be root 3 over 2 and tangent of 30 or tangent of pi over 6 will be root 3 over 3. Sine of 45 will be uh, root 2 over 2, cosine of 45 will be root 2 over 2, and tangent of 45 will just be 1. And then sine of 60 will be root 3 over 2, cosine of 60 will be 1 half, and tangent of 60 will be root 3. Again, we just found all of those with those triangles that we just did. And again, it corresponds exactly with that of the unit circle. So some key items from this lesson. The first is what the trig functions actually mean. Uh, so we need to know SOHCAHTOA, or sine is opposite over hypotenuse, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, and tangent is opposite over adjacent, which can also be written as sine over cosine. Then we also need to know the reciprocal functions. So cosecant is hypotenuse over, uh, over opposite, secant is hypotenuse over adjacent, and cotangent is adjacent over uh, opposite. That can also be written as 1 over tangent or cosine over sine. We also need to be familiar with and know how to use the Pythagorean theorem, which you all know is a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. But you should also know it as the hypotenuse squared is equal to the opposite squared plus the adjacent squared. 
We also need to know the common angles. Uh, so 30, 45, and 60. We need to be able to find the sine, the cosine, and the tangent of those angles, which correspond exactly with that of the unit circle. So that, in a nutshell, is right triangle trig. And that is all I have for this video.